ever felt like you have a bunch of things you need to keep track of, but they're all just floating around in your code? That's where lists and tuples come in. Think of them as super-organized containers, like your digital drawers and shelves, keeping your data neat and accessible. Let's start with lists. Imagine a flexible drawer where you can put anything and rearrange it whenever you want. We create a list using square brackets. So, type my list equals bracket. See those square brackets? That's how Python knows you're making a list. Now, let's put some things in our drawer. Like apple, then a comma, banana, another comma, and cherry. Each item is separated by a comma. Lists can hold all sorts of things. Numbers, text, even other lists. Finish it off with a closing square bracket, right bracket. Now let's see what's in our drawer. On the next line, type print my list. Go ahead and run this. Boom! There's our list, all nice and ordered. That's a key thing about lists. They keep the order you put things in. Now how do you grab something specific from your drawer? Each item in a list has a position, starting from zero. So, to get the first item, the apple, we type print my list open bracket, zero close bracket. That, zero, is called indexing. Run that. See? We got the apple. To get the banana, what index would we use? That's right, index one. Change it to print my list open bracket, one close bracket, and run it. Lists are super flexible. To add an item to the end of the list, we use the append function. Type my list dot append. Open parenthesis, orange close parenthesis. Think of it like adding something to the back of the line. Let's see our updated list. Type print my list and run it. There it is, orange, added to the end. But what if you want to put something in the middle? We use the insert function for that. Type my list dot insert one comma grape. The first number, one, is the index where you want to insert it, and grape is the item you're adding. This will push everything else to the right. Print the list again. Print my list, and let's see the result. See? Grape is now at index one. Now, what if you have another list you want to combine with your existing one? Let's create another list. Another list. Kiwi. Mango. To add all the items from another list to the end of my list, we use extend function. Type my list dot extend. Another list. Print the list. Print my list. And run it. Perfect. Both kiwi and mango are added. Now, what if you want to remove something? If you know the value you want to remove, use the remove function. Type my list dot remove open parenthesis, banana, close parenthesis. This will remove the first occurrence of banana. Print it. Print my list. Banana is gone. What if you want to remove something based on its position? We use the pop function for that. Type removed item my list dot pop open parenthesis. Three close parenthesis. The number three is the index of the item you want to remove. Dot pop is special because it also returns the item you removed. Let's print the removed item. Print removed item and then print the list. Print my list. See? Orange, which was at index 3, is gone and we stored it in the removed item variable. If you just want to remove the last item, you can call pop without any index. Try my list dot pop and then print my list. Mango is gone the last one out. Now, what if you want to find the position of something? We use the index function. Type index of cherry equals my list dot index, open parenthesis, cherry close parenthesis, and then print open parenthesis, index of cherry close parenthesis. This will tell us the index of the first occurrence of cherry. It's at index 2. What if you want to know how many times something appears in your list? Let's add apple again. My list dot append apple. Now type count of apple equals my list dot count open parenthesis 
apple close parenthesis and print count of apple. It appears twice. Now, what if you want to arrange your list alphabetically? We use the sort function. Type my list dot sort and then print open parenthesis, my list close parenthesis. It's sorted. And if you want to reverse the order of your list, use the reverse function, my list dot reverse, followed by print my list. Now it's in reverse order. Finally, if you want to know how many items are in your list, we use the len function. Type length of list equals len my list and then print length of list, five items in our list. Okay, you've explored the wonderful world of lists. Now, let's talk about their slightly more rigid cousin, tuples. Think of tuples like fixed shelves. Once you put things on them, you can't easily change them. We create tuples using parentheses instead of square brackets. Type my tuple equals open parenthesis close parenthesis. See the round parentheses. That's a tuple. Let's put some items. Apple, comma, banana, comma, cherry, and close the parentheses. Print it out. Print my tuple. There's our tuple. Just like lists, tuples are ordered, and you can access items using their index. Try print my tuple zero. Works the same way. Now here's the key difference. Try to add something to the tuple, like you did with the list. If you try to type my tuple append orange, you'll see that there's no append function for tuples. You can't add, remove, or change items in a tuple after it's created. That's what we mean by immutable. Similarly, if you try to change an item directly, like my tuple zero equals grape, you'll get an error. Tuples are fixed. However, some functions work with tuples. You can still use count. Type count of apple in tuple, my tuple dot count apple, and print count of apple in tuple, and you can use index function. Type index of banana in tuple, my tuple dot index banana, and print index of banana in tuple. And of course, length function works too. Type length of tuple, len my tuple, and print length of tuple. So, when do you use lists and when do you use tuples? Lists are great when you have a collection of items that might need to change. Adding new items, removing old ones, or reordering them. Tuples are useful when you have a fixed collection of items that shouldn't be modified, like the coordinates of a point or the days of the week. Think of lists as your editable grocery list and tuples as the set days of the week. Both are useful just for different purposes. You've now got a solid grasp of lists and tuples. Play around with them, try different functions, and see how they work. The more comfortable you become with these fundamental data structures, the more powerful your Python code will be. Keep practicing, and in the next video, we'll explore even more ways to organize and manipulate your data. Keep coding,